Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I have a very, very exciting program. Please forward this video to as many people as possible. Have, if you haven't subscribed to me, please do subscribe to me. I'm going to today talk about the Quran and how the Quran shows the link between Prophet Sulaiman and magic and how that false link, false link, because Quran says this link that people have made particularly the Ahlul Kitab, particularly the Bani Israel part of Ahlul Kitab. They have made this link between Suleiman was doing magic, as you know Quran mentions this, وَاتَّبَعُوا مَا تَطْلُوا الشَّيَاطِينُ وَعَلَى مُلْكِ Sulaiman. And they followed what the Shayateen, the teachings of Shayateen. So what you're going to see today is the teachings of the Shayateen regarding the kingdom of Suleiman that it was the shayateen that taught the people that Sulaiman who was a prophet of Allah that he was actually doing magic it wasn't that he actually had the he he wasn't given these powers by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but rather this was all magic that he was doing with the jinns and so on and so forth and i will tell you why this is so important because as you will see okay that when the jal comes he will sit in the seat of Sulaiman Okay, he will sit on the rock of David, as they say. He will sit in on the throne of David, and he wants to rule the whole, you know, the kingdom that the the Zionists, the religious Zionists, because Zionism in the beginning was a secular movement, but now is becoming religious, more and more religious. This is why when you read the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ about the future, you find a very religious world, because some things will happen to shake this world so badly that people will become hardliners in terms of their religiousity, right? They will forget that they were atheists, you know? This is where we're headed. But anyway, obviously there, there, there will still be some atheists, but people will, for the most part, be fighting for religion because when the nations fall, when these false borders fall, the only thing that will bring people together at that time will be religion. So understand that. That is the future. This whole system is going to collapse. This is something very, very clear. Okay? Now, in that time, a man will come up and he will rule the world, but particularly his domain will be as the domain of Sulaiman. Okay? And uh, so, uh, I'm going to talk more about this another time, but I just want to show you the verse of Quran that uh, talks about. This. Okay? And they followed, right? They followed, meaning the people of Bani Israel, they followed the tilawa, the recitation, or whatever the shayateen were teaching them about the kingdom of Sulaiman. So if somebody wants to be, like the state of Israel, become a world power. And they're Bani Israel, and then they have these roots that believe in these false notions that what Taba'uma Tatulu Shayatin wa Alam Mulki Sulaiman, and they followed what the Shayatin taught them or recited to them about the kingdom of Sulaiman. Wa ma kafara Sulaiman. Allah said Sulaiman didn't do kufr. Wa lakin na Shayatina kafaru. But it was the Shayatin who did kufr. It was the Shayatin. What was the kufr? Doing magic. You are limun and nasa sihr. They used to teach, teach people magic in the name of Prophet Sulaiman Okay? Now, having said this, right, what is the link between this magic and the temple of Sulaiman, the third temple that they want to build, and the link with the coming of Dajjal and so and so forth. So, but, but today I want to establish a few points. Number one point is going to be that they link the building of the temple with magic because they believe that Suleiman who built the temple, Suleiman who built the temple, built the temple using magic and using the chaotin and using the jinns. And so when they will have to build the temple, which they want to build, <coughs> what are they going to do? They're going to build the temple in the same way that they believe falsely believe that Sulaiman built the temple. And for that, you have to use the shayateen, you have to use the jinns, so they will try to get control of the jinns to build the temple without any machinery, without any cutting stones, 
without anything that cuts stones. They will use the jinns to build things. Okay? And so, let us quickly go over a few points that I want to make. Number one is this very point. I just want to show you uh, this one point here, inshallah ta'ala, very quickly. Uh, here, the manuscript explains how Suleiman forced demons to cut stones for and build the temple. The demons worked during the night and were so noisy that King Thabur of the Gentiles planned to wage a war against Suleiman. Once he realized Suleiman commanded Dima and demons, he abandoned the plan. Okay, so this is this is the kingdom of the Jal that is going to be built upon the, the, the coming of the third. Those people, those people that have been studying this is very clear to them. But those of you who have not been studying this and listening to this for the first time, maybe all the dots are not being connected. But, you know, you have to go back to my previous lectures and see how all the dots kind of connect. Over here, I'm only making the following points. Number one, the connection between magic and Suleiman. And because the Jewish... Uh, the, the the Zionists they want to build the ter third temple of Suleiman and they want they have to therefore because that's a religious building they have to build it in the way Suleiman built it because he built it and in order to build it the way Suleiman built it they have to use the demons who will cut the stones for them for that building okay now I will tell you the current location which is Masjid al-Aqsa that is considered by Jews the place of the third temple, which is the wrong place. It is actually the city of David that is the right place. And this is very clear even when you read the past Islamic literature from this question perspective. Where is that temple? Right? And and, and even Umar radiallahu anh said that the temple, where the temple was, is a garbage place. He said this. And today the city of David is a garbage place and that's where it is. Where the Prophet built the masjid for Aqsa is, is on the side, is on the other side of that. But these magician, rabbi magicians, which I will talk about one day, they're the ones that mention that location where the Prophet's masjid, where the Prophet led the prayer for all the Prophets as that, because that is the place that is kind of like the link to the other world. And, and I'll go into this one day. Um, you have to understand a very important rule, okay? The rule is, whoever controls Jerusalem, controls the world. Whoever controls Jerusalem controls the world. Look at the whole human history. Look at our own history. When we controlled Jerusalem, we were controlling the world. When we lost, what was the first thing we lost as the Ottoman, even before the Ottoman Empire fell, the first thing Muslims lost was Jerusalem. When the Tatars came and the Crusaders came in, uh, uh, you know, in, in the past, what happened? The Tatars, the, 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 the the, the Crusades, they took over the uh, the city of Jerusalem. Then what did Suleiman Ayyubi do? He got Jerusalem back, right? So these are things, again, I would like you to share this with other people, inshallah ta'ala, and, and, and really, uh, I want to share this with you now. The link, I'm not going to go into details, the magical keys of Suleiman, right? So this is what the Shayateen have taught. This is like wahi of Shayateen on human beings amongst the Shayateen, and they have spread this idea of Kabbalah and magic and keys and we're going to build a temple and the Savior will come and he will rule the world and the Messiah will come and all of this is happening. Okay, views of Suleiman's magic. Okay, I'm just only showing you. <coughs> um, you can just skip this one for now. The, uh, the Midnight Freemason over here, there's a whole thing about uh, Prophet Suleiman, the magic of King Suleiman. You see that? And then I can show you so many videos in which rabbis are performing magic. Okay? Real magic of Suleiman. Ancient secrets revealed. Okay? Uh, King Suleiman's seals. Uh, Kabbalah, King, uh, Kabbalah, which is Jewish magic and mysticism. Kabbalah, King Suleiman. Uh, and uh, Kabbalah seals, the amulets, this is all magic that they, the Shayateen have, Kabbalah talesmen, right? King Suleiman, and it goes into uh, magic in this too. And uh, then you have Kabbalah unmaxed, the eschatology of Suleiman's seal, okay? This is how certain Jewish uh, groups, they see this, okay? 
Then you have Suleiman's demons. Okay, the, uh, Suleiman, the King Suleiman's demon. Like they have a whole video on this. Okay, uh, you have books that are being written on the topic of. Uh, here, let me show you this. Uh, Kabbalah and magic and the great work of self transformation. Kabbalah and magic of angels, which is actually the jinns. Okay, and and this is what is going to happen when they do magic. They're using jinns, but they're going to think it's angels. Okay. And, 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 which is interesting because that ayah talks about Harut and Marut, which I'll go into one day uh, to explain that. Uh, but over here, I'm only making the power of language in Jewish Kabbalah and magic. How to do and undo things with words. Astaghfirullah. Um, spells and dangers. Again, going back to Prophet Suleiman. Makkah and Kabbalah, which is an interesting uh, thing. Kabbalah, uh, okay. So, uh, now, what is it that I want to show you now? Now, as you know, they're trying to build a temple. This is a website called Jewish Voice. I just want to read to you a part of this so you can maybe appreciate this. However, many religious Jews do not support this idea, meaning of building the temple. Okay? Because they have adopted a diaspora mentality. Diaspora is when Jewishes are all, you know, they don't have a homeland. Okay? And a spiritualized way of thinking, which sets aside hope in a literal fulfillment of the biblical prophecies regarding a future temple. For them, the present political situation on the Temple Mount, with Muslims controlling the site, is acceptable. Meaning for them it is. But for us it's not. We have to remove the Muslims, we have to remove Al-Aqsa, and we have to build our own temple there. Okay? What can be more satanic, that you have to move the house of Allah, right, to build your, your, your temple? Right? That would be like, if you have to remove the house of Allah to build another temple, that would be the temple of Satan. Right? Jewish leaders in the temple how, uh, movement, however, believe Jewish people are not living the spiritual level God intended because of the absence of the Sakhina, which is we can call in Arabic Sakhina, okay? uh, divine from the world. Rabbi Cham Richmond, director of the Temple Institute, which has produced all the ritual vessels necessary for the function of the temple and works to train priests for this future work, says there is a connection between the need for a new level of spiritual in, uh, uh, attainment and the rebuilding of the temple, and so on and so forth. So they are planning this. They are planning to do this. If you go to the Temple Institute uh, website, so on and so forth. But here, I want to just leave you with this one question and this one thought. Of course, if Quran said there's a link between Suleiman and the lies that are fabricated against him about magic, right? And that this is how he got his kingdom. Mulk, his kingship of Suleiman. So now they're saying you have to do this magic to get this kingship back. And so this is why it makes sense that when Suleiman saw somebody sitting on his chair, right, and then he did dua, Allah, don't give anyone the power you've given me, or give me the power you've given no one, right? Give me a kingdom that will be given to none. But these people will try to copy that, but it will not be given to them. It will be destroyed by Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Okay, now my time is running out for today, but my point is, that when Quran says something, it is true. Every word of Quran matters. Every word, every letter of Quran matters. And so please share this with other people. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi أشهد أن لا